Welcome everyone. I'm excited to be with you tonight. Uh, tonight is really about information I'm going to share to help you on your health journey. I'm on my personal health journey, but it's really about information that I'm going to give you so you can determine if you want to act on the information that I share with you. Did you know that in your lifetime you're going to consume 30 to 50 tons of food? Think about all the additives, dyes, preservatives, colors, all the things that are in our food supply. But from an environmental standpoint, what about all the toxins we're exposed to? What about the chemical exposure in our cleaning products or our skincare products? Obviously, all of these things are affecting our health and well-being. So tonight, I'm, I'm going to give you some information, and hopefully you'll act and make some changes. But we don't control everything. So let's work on the things that we can control. Let me ask you, how many of you took the time to fill out the questionnaire? Show of hands. OK, great. When you went through the questionnaire, you know, you don't have to share your outcome with me, but just true confession. Do you feel like the results were pretty good? Or do you feel like you were shocked, surprised, and there's definitely some room for improvement? Show hands on improvement. All right. Everybody feels like they have room for improvement. And that's why you're here tonight, because you're interested. So I'd like to start out with a visual. So you can see this glass of water, and it's half full. Right, everybody can see that? Well, what would happen if I took this full glass of water? So this water represents the capability of our liver on a day-to-day -day basis. Our liver has the ability to detoxify probably this amount of toxins that you're exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. What happens if all of a sudden you're overexposed? I'm not going to keep going because I don't want to get my suit wet or mess up the floor here. But obviously, your body is not going to be able to handle the extra toxic burden that is placed on the liver. So today, or tonight rather, we're going to talk about a program that your doctor is going to do in conjunction with you. It's called Detox with Your Doc or detox with your healthcare professional. So the cool thing about this is your doctor is going to do it with you. So any questions you have, any challenges you have, any concerns that you have, they're there. They're your support. And they're going to do it right along with you. The thing I want to really point out is I see a little apprehension in the audience all of a sudden when I start talking about, well, you know, maybe they'll hold your hand. They're not really holding your hand. But what they're doing is they're supporting you on your health journey. And what I want to share, put your mind at ease, listen, if I can do this, you can do it. It's easy. It's a seven-day detox. All I'm asking you to do to consider tonight is to make a commitment to change your life, to change your health journey over the next seven days. And it is something that will be very effective for you. So tonight we're going to talk about revitalizing healthy liver function. It's all about reducing the tox toxic burden and getting your liver functioning properly. So obviously I mentioned I'm excited that you're here. Hopefully at the end of the evening, you're going to be excited that you took some time to be with us. So this is an alarming statistic. So each one of you in the course of a year is exposed to 14 pounds of pesticides, herbicides, food additives, and preservatives. So how many of you go bowling once in a while or in your lifetime you've gone bowling, right? Perhaps you're not grabbing that big 16-pound bowling ball. You've grabbed a 14-pound ball. Well, think about that. Strapping that 14-pound ball and carrying you around, that represents all the pesticides, herbicides, and additives and preservatives that you've been exposed to in the course of one year. I read an interesting statistic last night that just getting ready this morning, the average person is exposed to 100 chemicals from bathing to the skincare products you're applying, to the food you eat, before you walk out the door, your burden, on your toxic burden on your liver is 100 chemicals that you're exposed to. So obviously it makes sense that we start to consider doing something about it. Before I get into some of the different toxins that we're exposed to, I really want to talk about your healthcare provider and what I've observed in my career is that many healthcare providers what they'll do it, from a functional medicine standpoint, they're going to work on elimination perhaps first. Tonight we're talking about elimination. 
working on revitalizing liver function is elimination. We're, we, we'll talk about using elimination diets. So we're pulling some of the food sensitivities out of your diet, pulling out preservatives and additives and things like that. Well, the other things that your healthcare professional might work on might be digestion. Maybe they want to make sure you have the good bugs in your gut. That would be microflora balance. Or maybe you've had um, some GI related issues and they want to uh, work on some of those and they'll focus on gut integrity. So think of the pillars of GI health as a table. And we all know that a table has four legs. And what happens if you cut one of them a little short? Obviously you have an unstable table. And that's exactly what happens on our journey to health. That's why elimination is such a critical thing that your doctor will use as one of the tools in his toolbox, his or her toolbox rather, to help you on your health journey. So let, let's establish a definition for toxins. So really they're uh, a foreign substance to your body. Um, they add to the toxic burden of your liver and of your body. And they're fat soluble. So the interesting thing about these toxins, when I use the analogy you know, of the half glass of water, and I talked about when you pour more in, unfortunately, your liver has to send those ex excess toxins out for storage. Where do you think they end up? Right? Stomach, hips, thighs, areas we really don't want getting larger. But that's exactly what takes place. So now I get the exciting stuff. I get to talk to you about where all these toxins are coming from. Just take a second to breathe the air. Have you ever been on a busy highway or recently I was in downtown Chicago? Roll the window down on a nice day and it's not too long and you're rolling the window back up, right? Because you're probably close to a truck that you know, has a lot of uh, exhaust fumes or a bus or just the traffic in general. You know, but maybe you're fortunate enough and you live in the country. Well, don't be fooled. There's still toxins floating in the air that you're breathing as well. So as a child growing up, my dad was a painting contractor. And unfortunately, my dad and my uncle, who I worked for, have long passed away of cancer. But I was exposed to a lot of solvents in my uh, early childhood and youth as I grew up. So what's in your past? What makes you think that maybe you were exposed to some chemicals that it would be good to get rid of in your body? Um, certainly everybody has read and knows about heavy metals and pesticides and herbicides and inhalants and things that we want to clear out. So we'll talk about those um, more. So the reality is everybody has chemicals in storage. The US EPA has done biopsies and you know, you're, you're not unique. 100% of individuals have had dioxins and PCBs and sterines and xylene in storage in their fat tissue. The sad thing about these chemicals is they are responsible for up to 95% of cancer according to Columbia University School of Public Health. Kind of scary, right? So whether we realize it or not, we're exposed to things that could be detrimental. So we titled this slide, Are You at Risk? I know because of my past, I'm at risk, but are you at risk? And I have to be honest, I mean, I feel like I'm doing a really good job and living kind of clean right now. But the reality is, you can't live clean enough. You're exposed to dioxins and PCBs, just in outgassing. Think about it. Have you touched a piece of paper today? A pen? You know, inks, paints, furnishing, construction glues? I mean, your work environment, your home environment. You know, these things outgas like xylene from our carpet, our furnishings, styrene, you know, from plastics and bottles and things like that. So yes, we are getting exposure. What about our homes? You know, sometimes we feel like our home is our force field, like our fortress, right? But the reality in our home, we're exposed to over 500 chemicals on a daily basis. The Wallace Group did a study on um, individuals that live in New Jersey, and they basically found when they, they tracked the exhaled breath of these individuals that they had a lot of toxins that they were emitting that caused free radical damage. 
that add to the aging process and ultimately disease. You know, you notice that I'm in a suit, correct? Well, you know, dry cleaning. It's hard to even pronounce some of these words, right? Trichloroethylene. Scary word. But those are the chemicals that we're exposed to and they end up in your bloodstream. So certainly, perhaps getting your suits clean by someone that uses organic chemicals might be a good solution. You know, for in, any individuals that uh, listen to this presentation that happen to live in the eastern part of the country, this is an herbicide that you're actually exposed to frequently, and it's called atrazine. It's used on our crops. And in just a second, I'll show you a slide of the United States with the concentration of atrazine. But what's interesting about atrazine is atrazine actually causes some harm and adds to weight gain. So it causes mitochondrial dysfunction. Whoa, <laughs> you know, big word, right? But just try to remember back to science class, every cell in our body has a mitochondria. It's the powerhouse of the cell. It's what creates the fuel and food and energy for that individual cell. Well, what happens if that, that mitochondria isn't functioning, the cell dies? The interesting thing in this study, they found that the individuals that had a heavy exposure to this herbicide atrazine actually ended up gaining weight, becoming obese, and ended up with insulin resistance. So insulin resistance over time will lead to diabetes. So we have to clear these things out of storage. So here's a map of the United States. If you're unfortunate enough to live in the concentrated red part here of the country, I strongly suggest that you keep listening <laughs> to what I have to say uh, in our presentation. It's a little scary, obviously. This shows the concentration of just the one, and I just want to point this out. This is one herbicide that's used on crops. This is just one. So. Let's talk about some lifestyle toxins. You know, lifestyle toxins, what's interesting, interesting about them is we have some control, right? We can choose to do some things, we can stop doing some things, and we can stop using some products that cause issue, and we, create, we can create some new habits. So, cosmetics, your skincare products. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about those in just a second. Nicotine. Somebody may choose to smoke. I strongly encourage you, I beg you, implore you, please give up that habit. It's affecting your health and longevity. Perhaps someone chooses to indulge a little bit too much in alcohol. What prescription medications are you on? I'm gonna show you a chart that is a little scary when it comes to the micronutrients that are depleted because of the medications you're on. But those medications have to be detoxified by our liver. They add to the toxic burden of the liver. Well, this slide is very interesting. From a lifestyle standpoint, this was alarming to my wife and to myself. And honestly, we went through our household and threw a lot of things over. My wife had to really go through her skincare products and change out a lot of things. But honestly, I didn't have a single product in my cabinetry in the past that still exists today. So I cleaned house. So the one thing I want to share with you is the skin is our largest organ of elimination. So it's important that we keep our skin healthy and what we apply to our skin ends up in our body. So you'll find this interesting. The average man uses six personal care products a day. The average woman, 12. Now we have a fair amount of ladies in the audience tonight. So of those 12 personal care products that you're using, that's 126 potential chemical exposures in the course of a day. So if you multiply that out times a year, it's nearly 46,000 chemical exposures. Just think about that, 46,000 chemical exposures just on the personal care products that you're using. So do me a huge favor, because this is the same thing that my wife and I did. When you go home tonight, and for some of you, if you have a lot of stuff, it may take more than just tonight. I want you to go through your products and I want you to look for three ingredients. I would call these topical junk food for your skin. The first being parabens. 
So if you have any products that have parabens, I want you to discontinue using them. Parabens are hormone disruptors. You're trying to balance your hormones as you age. Your healthcare professional may be working with you to balance your hormones. And basically, you are not allowing that to happen because you're disrupting the balance of those hormones. The second one is dimethicone. Anything ending in cone, stop using it. Hormone disruptor. And then the last one, interesting, is sodium lauryl sulfate. So if you look at your toothpaste, your shampoo, you're gonna see those, that ingredient, it's what creates the suds or foaming action, and it's harmful to the body. So let's talk about water. When I was in college, I actually did a term paper on the water coming out of Lake Michigan. I was naive, I just thought water is pure H2O, right? You remember that from chemistry class? Guess what, it's not. There's hundreds and thousands of chemicals. You know, I was surprised to learn that the stuff we're flushing down the toilet is really going into uh, water sources like Lake Michigan and coming right back. I was naive to think they had this sophisticated filtration system. They didn't. They basically ran it over sand and the larger particles went through and I was drinking those particles. So water is kind of scary. It's important that we make an investment in pure, cleaner water. Talk to your healthcare provider about that. But let's look at some of the things that you should be concerned about. Mercury, nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen, heavy metals, pesticides. What about the runoff from farm lands, right? Ends up in streams and rivers and ultimately in our water supply. Well, there's new research coming out showing that they're really looking at the analytics of the topography of the land, and they're starting to work on ways that they can change the runoff, which is something we should all be concerned about and we should be advocates of. So what about food? I love to eat, but what about the soil that that food is grown in? What about the preservation of that food with dyes and coloring and preservatives? Those are the things that we should be concerned about. This weekend I went shopping with my wife and we went to our you know, couple grocery stores that we frequent. And uh, you know, my wife has her list and she's good at shopping and knows what she's doing. I tend to just help out a little bit and then I like to stand off and observe. I feel like that's my gift in life. I love to watch people. And my wife is on the outer bank or aisle of the grocery store, right? She's in the produce, you know, the healthy meat, lean meats, grass-fed beef, those kinds of things. She's buying that. And I like to stand off in the distance and watch all the people filling their carts in the middle of the grocery store, right? That's where all the packaged process, additives, preservatives, all the junk that's adding to our healthcare problems exist. Best advice I can give you is shop the perimeter of any store. Time out how many seconds you're spending in the middle of the store and get out of there, right? So when my wife and I go shopping, here are the things that we want to try to buy organic. In particular, I'm an advocate of eating an apple or two every day. When I was a kid growing up, my mom always said, eat an apple every day and it'll keep the, no offense, doc, the doctor away, right? Apples have all of these polyphenols and life-giving forces inside of them, but the, the sad thing is all the herbicides, insecticides, preservatives, are not preservatives, but those chemicals exist in the apple unless we're buying organic. So I love apples, I love strawberries, I love blueberries, lettuce, kale. These are the things that we really, really want to shop for if we can afford to. If not, start with the ones that are your favorite. Apples, strawberries, etc. for me. Buy those organic. Spend the extra money because they're loaded with pesticides. So let's talk about cleaning products. What do you clean with? I encourage you to go online and start looking at more organic, natural cleaning products. If you've used ingredients like strong bleaches and never got a whiff of it, I mean, it's like you almost pass out from that stuff, right? You know, maybe you put gloves on, but you're still breathing the stuff in. You know, what if you polish the silverware? You know, what about phenol and cresol found in disinfectants? You know, right? We're disinfecting our countertops and the toilets and the floors and all these kinds of things. Formaldehyde. 
I remember that from preserving frogs in biology class. That sounds scary. I really don't want to be using something that has formaldehyde in it. So these are things that you should be concerned about and you can change. This is an alarming statistic. It takes an average of only 26 seconds. Think about this, 26 seconds for a, t for a chemical in a typical household to enter your bloodstream. 26 seconds. So whether it gets in your skin or whether you're breathing it in, 26 seconds, it's in your bloodstream. And that creates the burden in the, in the liver. That's your toxic burden that we're here to talk about tonight. What's interesting, according to the EPA, in our home environment and the air that we, ble we breathe indoor. So we would all think the outdoor air is worse, but I'm saying indoor. It can be up to 100 times more toxic than the air outside. Best advice I can give you is make sure you're cleaning that filter and buy more expensive filters on your air conditioner and your furnace. So internal toxins are also a problem. So we've talked about environmental and lifestyle toxins. Now I just want to briefly touch on internal toxins. I don't know if you know, but there's good bugs in our gut and those good little bugs react with things and they create bacteria. Perhaps we've been exposed to yeast or fungus or our body um, is producing these things. These create toxicity in your body and your liver has to detoxify or cleanse that. How many of you feel like you're under some stress? Homework, financial, right? Okay, come on, raise your hand. You gotta be under some stress. Okay, I've got, a, I've got somebody with two hands up, double stress, right? Well, the reality is the outcome of stress creates toxins, free radicals, and creates issues for our body. So, as I kind of quit talking about all the toxicity in our world, let's start just summing up, hopefully, I've been able to give you enough information to convince you that on your health journey you need to do something about it. So if, it, if you haven't had enough information, hopefully this will convince you, but you know, our own CDC in 2006 reported that there are 116 out of 148 synthetic compounds in the body. And I'm gonna drop down a couple slides because this one scares me, it alarms me, and it should alarm you. The average umbilical cord blood contains 217 neurotoxins. 208 are known to cause birth defects. You know, I am a proud grandfather of a 17 month old boy. And I'm telling you, this is so concerning to me. This is the world we've created. This is evident of how burdened our detoxification capacities have become, resulting in storage of toxins, adding to your toxic load in your body. So here's why we need to, de to uh, detox. We're consuming 30 to 50 tons of food. If you are one of the individuals that have some GI related issues, you have some malabsorption challenges, you're more toxic than somebody that has a healthy functioning GI tract. Your doctor may select this program just to help your GI system out. And really, this is the least expensive and invasive method that will be used by many healthcare professionals to affect your GI health. This slide I want you to ponder a little bit because this, it takes a while to wrap your head around this concept I personally, on my health journey, have been working hard on losing weight. This is my year to get myself healthy and get my weight where I want it to be. So I'm not gonna share how much I've lost, but I've lost a substantial amount of weight and I have some more to lose. The challenge is, look at this, the, you know, to the left, going to the right, look at the second um, bullet point that starts out dieting. So, when we're dieting, when we're exercising, what are we doing? We have all these toxins in storage. 
we're not getting rid of fat cells, they're just shrinking down. So what we're doing is we're increasing the density of those toxins in storage. I don't know about you, but that sounds a little concerning. And the body is interesting because now the those toxins are compressed, right? As I've lost a little weight, the concentration of toxins is greater in my body, you know, in each fat cell that has storage, right? So now it's a protective mechanism by the body. The body goes, whoa, no more. I'm not gonna let you lose any more weight because this concentrated amount of toxins is gonna come out and it could be detrimental or harmful to your health. So the body goes into a preservation mode. But hey, I don't want that. I wanna keep losing weight. So unless you participate in something that's gonna revitalize your liver function so your liver can handle those toxins coming out of fat storage, you're gonna be spinning your wheels. What's exciting about this program, like the diagram on the right, we can get to the point where we have less toxins in storage, we're mean and lean. And I can tell you that's exactly who I wanna be and where I'm going. And I encourage you to join me on that journey. So now I get to transition and let's just talk about what the liver actually does as in an organ. A very important organ in our body. It's involved in filtering our blood. It stores glucose in the form of glycogen. So if I've got to run, right? How's that gonna happen? It's gonna happen because my liver is gonna release that stored glucose in the form of glycogen. It conjugates and breaks down all of our hormones. It produces and secretes bile. Bile is the transport ship that carries a lot of toxins out of our body and it lubricates the stool. Now I don't wanna ask everybody how many movements they've had you know, in the course of the day, but if you're not having up to three movements a day, you may have some GI related issues. And bile is critical because it lubricates the stool. So bottom line, is the liver is the primary organ of detoxification. So think about the liver this way. You can think about it as if it had two parts. We're gonna talk about phase one and phase two. And I have a diagram on the next um, slide so you can kind of stare at that, but just kind of you know, walk, uh, listen to what I have to say and just let it sink in a little bit. So when we ingest a toxin, it's a foreign substance, right, to our body. It's fat soluble. The body's goal is to take that substance and convert it into something that's not harmful. And it's gonna do that in stage or phase one with a group of enzymes or genes called cytochrome P450 enzymes. And they're going to biotransform it into something called an intermediate metabolite. Thing you have to know is the intermediate metabolite is more harmful than the original substance. How many of you have done a detox in the past? Okay, a lot of you. How many of you have experienced headaches, felt nauseated? It's because the toxin is trapped as an intermediate metabolite. So we need clearance to take place and that clearance happens in phase two. So in phase two, we have these conjugation pathways that take that harmful substance and it transforms it into a substance that's not harmful that can be excreted. So I'm gonna go over it one more time because it's important that you kind of get a handle on what we're trying to help you do when you revitalize liver function. So if you kind of work, uh, look at this slide from left to right. So we talked a lot about all the toxins. So the top of the slide says detoxification or biotransformation. So all that is is a fancy big word that says we're taking something, we're converting it to something else. From a scientific or chemistry standpoint, we're just creating attachment sites on it. So we take that toxin, which is fat soluble, we biotransform it in phase one into, you can see on the right side of the hexagon on the bottom, it says intermediate metabolite. So it's now stuck there until the back half of the liver, phase two, does its job, and then it can take that intermediate metabolite convert it into, or biotransform it rather, into a water-soluble substance that's excreted you know, in bile via the stool or kidneys. Now, before I leave this slide, I wanna point out, see those big hexagon slides? There's a lot of words written in the middle. 
These are micronutrients, polyphenols and amino acids that are necessary to support both phase one and phase two. And that's a real critical um, point that I need to make because I'll come back to that, okay? So toxins actually deplete the necessary detox nutrients. None of us know how many toxins are in different parts of our body. You know, whether it's our bones, whether they're stored in our fat cells, whether they're in the fatty portion in our brain tissue. They can be all over our body, right? Well, this is research done by um, a very smart individual that started looking at where these toxins tend to sit, settle and what he found is everybody's different. In the reality, the point I want to make on this slide is the bottom slide. If we're burdened, so we can handle that half glass of water, if our toxic burden is a full glass every day on top of that, what happens is we use up all those micronutrients that were in those hexagon squares. We use all those nutrients up and now our liver can't function properly. So when the liver can't function properly, all the toxins have to go into storage. And trust me, you don't want that happening. So this is probably my favorite slide. I promised earlier that I would get to this slide. If you're on a pharmaceutical, you know, I just want you to ponder this slide. What you're going to find is a lot of pharmaceuticals deplete key nutrients. In particular, as you look over this slide, perhaps you're on an antacid, perhaps you've been on, recently been on a round of antibiotics, perhaps you're using antidepressant medication or diuretics or cardiovascular meds or perhaps you're um, using oral birth control pills. You'll notice that a lot of these medications deplete key nutrients like B6, B12, folic acid, magnesium. All of those are critical, in particular for you ladies in the audience, for the conjugation of hormones. Uh, it affects a pathway called methylation, one of the conjugation pathways. And if you're deficient in those nutrients, that pathway will not work and you're in trouble. So it's important that we provide the right nutrition and we get, that, get the liver functioning at its optimal capacity. So I mentioned when I started that we have a seven day detox. I said it's so simple, even I can do it. So you can do this program. Uh, the program's designed to assist in detoxifying that toxic burden the elimination, we're going to use an elimination diet, so we're eliminating a lot of the toxic burden that we're exposed to and a lot of the sensitivities in foods that we may have. So we're going to also supply the essential micronutrients, phytonutrients, and then very clean protein to make sure the liver has everything it needs to function. And then we're going to affect ultimately the health of your GI system. So again, the goals of the program here, simplified, we want to remove the toxic burden. So I'll talk about the first couple days we'll use an elimination diet, or we're going to use an elimination diet rather through the whole program, but we're going to use a modified fast in the first couple days. Uh, then we're going to restore, when we start eating the, the foods that are healthy, we're going to restore proper uh, liver function, revital, and then ultimately we're going to revitalize the function of the liver through the nutrients that we're going to provide in the program and that'll allow you to conti you know, continue on your health journey. And the one piece of advice I can give you is that this, it's not a bad idea to do something like uh, the um, Core Restore program a couple times a year. Just you know, on an individual basis, think of your exposure and then you decide and work with your healthcare professional on that. So the first product that we have that I want to talk about is called Core Support. The brilliance of this product, when I, I've been in this healthcare industry for going on 30 years, when I analyzed and looked at what orthomolecular products created in our Core Restore uh, program, and in particular in Core Re uh, Support, I thought it was brilliant. And the reason being is what they're doing is they're only working on the back half of the liver first. So this is a powder you're going to take through the, pr through the seven days, but you're only going to take this with a multivitamin in the first couple days. 
And the beauty of that is you're rubbing up the back half of the engine. You're helping the liver work optimally so nothing gets stuck in the middle as that intermediate metabolite and can create the headaches and nauseated feeling that you may have experienced in the past on a detox. So what do we have in the product? We have to have a hypoallergenic rice protein, very bioavailable. It breaks down to amino acids. Amino acids are building blocks. They're going to help those conjugation pathways in the back half of the liver. So we have fiber. We're releasing toxins. We've got to sequester those toxins. So we have some vegetable enzymes. They upregulate the back half of the liver, the enzymatic activity for, those, for biotransformation. And the last thing, I thought, again, that this was a real breakthrough. We added ingredients to help the mitochondria, the cells of just the liver, have energy and fuel. So we added N-acetylcysteine, alpha-lipoic acid, and, and acetyl-L-carnitine to accomplish that. Next, we give you a multivitamin. I talked about how so many people are deficient in micronutrients. So it's important that we provide those micronutrients, vitamins and minerals, and then also that we provide a high level of antioxidants. So antioxidants combat free radicals. Good antioxidants are like C, E, selenium, et cetera. Those are good things to make sure you're getting in your body because they're gonna help get rid of those toxins so they're not harmful to your body. And then on day three, and again, I'll go over this, you're gonna introduce a new product. It's called Phytocore. I'm going to throw out some big words, so don't panic. They're, this product is designed to be a lipotropic, a choleretic, and a cholagog. So I'm going to simplify it. Lipotropic. We want to break down fat because our liver, if we could take a quick picture of our liver you know, and look at it, there's congestion in there. There's fat in there. So we have to use a lipotropic choline and acetylmethionine, certain ingredients that are gonna break down that congestion and fat in the liver. Next, we're gonna use a lot of botanicals that are choleretics and cholagogs. So those would include like the yellow dock and beet leaf, beet leaf rather. And what they do as a choleretic, it increases the production of bile. So the liver produces bile, it's stored in our gallbladder, and then expressed when we consume a fat in our diet. So that's the cholagog portion, is it helps to express it. So again, a choleretic is involved in the manufacture of bile, the cholagog in the expression of that bile on the fats going through our diet. So I have to admit, the first time Orthomolecular uh, asked me to do the program, they asked our whole company at the same time. And I don't know that they really asked me or just, you know, strongly suggested that I participate in the program. And I remember calling my wife, freaking out, saying, you know, I would travel so much, how am I gonna do this, right? Luckily, in the kit, there's a patient guide. The patient guide is really your roadmap to start your health journey. So it tells you what foods you can eat and what foods to avoid. We're gonna use an elimination diet. We're eliminating the eight most common food allergens. So peanut protein, soy protein, egg protein, gluten from your diet. We're eliminating the eight most common food allergens. And then we're telling you what you can eat. And what's cool about it, we go well beyond. We give you day by day suggestions. So day one, do this. Day two, do this. Day three, it's only seven day commitment. We also give you the ability to interchange from a dietary standpoint some suggestions. So, you know, day one, two, three, et cetera, we're gonna give you some leniency or variance to say, hey, I wanna eat this for breakfast one day, this for breakfast the next day, et cetera, and we're gonna give you recipes. So all my wife and I did is we went through the recipes and we said, oh, this looks great, or oh, I don't think I could try that. So whatever, you know, you, your flavor, whatever your palate, dictates, you'll gravitate towards that. And then we have uh, a grocery list in here as well. And what's cool, we lay it out and simplify it in the agenda, kind of like step one, day, day one, day two, day three, et cetera. So the cool thing about this program is I'm suggesting you make a commitment to seven days. You may feel like I did the first time, amazing, and go back to your healthcare professional and say, is there any way I can extend this to 14, 21, or 28 days? Which is exactly what I did the first time. 
and your healthcare professional will work with you and make that determination you know, for what's best for your health. All right, so now let's simplify it. Let's talk about protocol that you need to follow since you've decided to do the Core Restore program. So you're going to get a kit tonight. In the kit will be the patient guide. There's gonna be a big jug. When you pull that jug out, that's what we're looking at on the screen right now. You're gonna do two scoops of that in eight ounces of water with a non-dairy beverage such as rice milk, almond milk, coconut milk. And you're gonna do that twice a day and you're gonna take two alpha base capsules twice a day. We're also gonna suggest that you do a modified fast or that you fast in the first couple days. Again, we wanna rest the system. We don't want your body using all its life forces and energy for digestion. We wanna remove that toxic burden of food in the first couple days. The exception would be if you have blood sugar issues, your healthcare professional may decide that it's okay for you to eat some vegetables in those first couple days. So then on day three, again, this is AM and PM, you're gonna continue on two scoops of the powder, your favorite beverage of choice, rice milk, coconut milk, almond milk, eight ounces of water, again, two scoops, with two of the alpha base, and we're gonna add the phytocore. Phytocore is the capsule that's a lipotropic chloretic cholagog, and it just helps get rid of the congestion in the liver and get the bile production so stool movements and everything is functioning properly. So let's kind of start sum, summing it up a little bit. You're here because you're on your health journey. I'm guessing you want to feel better. I know that's why I did the program and why I continue to do the program a couple times a year. Now I gotta tell you, the first time I did this, I loved this side effect. I lost weight. <laughs> I see a couple of you smiling like, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Remember we talked about when you do dieting, you're condensing those toxins, and those toxins now condensed are preventing you from losing more weight. So if you're losing weight or want to lose weight and you plateau, just keep this in the back of your mind. You may want to go to this program to break through that plateau and continue losing the weight that you want to lose. So the reality is this toxic load, these toxins are stored in fat tissue. We don't want them there, we want them out. And it's gonna benefit our whole body. There's nothing better than on day three, constantly patients are telling me or doctors are telling me that their patients are telling them that they feel amazing once they get to day three. They just feel amazing. And when they're done with the program, they feel like they have a new lease on life. And the cool thing about it is you've eliminated seven or eight foods that you might be sensitive to. And perhaps just from that alone, you feel amazing, but it works. The program works. So as I wrap it up, I mean, I, I don't want to go back over my whole presentation, but I started out by talking about we're consuming 30 to 50 tons of food. What about the dyes, additives, preservatives, colors, all the things that are in our food supply? I talked about environmental challenges that we're up against. Pesticides, herbicides, insecticides. I talked about atrazine. We talked about skin care. We talked about chemical exposure and cleaning agents, right? We talked about our lifestyle choices, the foods we eat, the foods we don't eat. And then we talked about internal toxins that the body just normally will produce. Yeast, fungus, bacteria, things like that. You know, when I prepared for this presentation. Every time I go through it, I keep thinking it just makes sense. It makes sense that you do something. My dad has long passed away and he was a painting contractor. I'm the son of a guy that was a painting contractor and I probably spent 15 years of my life exposed to the same chemicals that my dad was exposed to and my uncle and they have long passed away. I've chosen to do something about it to improve my health and my health journey and I encourage you to get together with your healthcare professional and determine if the Core Restore seven day detox program is for you 